We're going to continue some of the lectures on signal processing, and what we're going to talk about in this lecture specifically is uh, an example where we use Fourier series to reconstruct uh, the input-output relationships of an LTI system. We're mostly going to focus in on how to construct signals, uh, and we're going to give a very specific example and how to represent that signal in terms of Fourier modes. Okay, so let's get to it. And here's the simple example. Now, this is a, a, a very nice, let's say, canonical example. So what you have here is an underlying signal that has values of 1, and then it goes up to 2 for a little bit, comes back down to 1 for a bit. And so it switches back and forth uh, between these two signals. Now, one of the things that we know when we're going to deal with linear, linear time invariant systems is that a signal like this can be can decomposed into two uh, fundamental signals that construct it. So for instance here, what we can think about is this signal being composed of both this component here, which looks like an on switch comes on for three points, goes off for two, comes back on for three. So this is an idea of a signal that's sitting, and if we add this signal to this signal here, uh, then we reconstruct our original signal here. So if I understand what happens with this signal, the representation of this first signal, and I understand what happens with this signal, I can simply add them together because I have linear superposition that holds in these LTI systems. So that's what we're going to work on. And this signal here is kind of really important because it's a generic class of signals that you'll see is that it's like an on switch, right? This thing comes on, goes off, comes on, goes off. And so what we'd really like to do is what is the generic representation in Fourier space of such a signal, because if we can build that, it becomes a very important building block for us in using uh, the representation of almost anything that has like an on-off switch uh, behavior to the system. So that's what we're gonna focus in on is then the construction of the signal for this plus this. And by the way, the second signal is very simple. It's a DC component. We call that direct current. It's a, a DC meaning direct current, which is very much a signal that is just constantly on. So uh, DC comes when we look, uh, electrify a system with a, a voltages that are constant, we call that DC, and most of our light switches operate on AC current, which is alternating current, which oscillates at 60 hertz. And so DC is anything that you would see like this that just has a constant value. So I have a DC signal, and I'm going to add, and I want to understand how to represent a DC signal, which is very simple, by the way, in Fourier mode space, because there are no oscillations. So this is going to just be the K equals zero mode of the uh, as we'll show of the Fourier series. And then here I want to understand how to represent an on switch. Okay, so let's get after this. Let's first start talking about the first component of that signal, which is this on switch. So let's go more broadly to look at this. So here is a generic on switch. In uh, this generic on switch, it has N from zero to N. This is, uh, you have sort of this pattern repeating over a period of N. So right from negative N to zero, you have uh, this thing three on, off, three, uh, two on, back, and then repeat the pattern again. Three on, off, two on, three on, off, two on. Okay, so N1 represents the length of the on switch, right? So N1 goes from, it goes from negative N1 to N1. In this case, what's represented here is N1 is two. So you get a total of five discrete points discrete time bins, if it were, that it's on and then it goes off for six. And so N represents the fundamental period of this signal, right? This signal is repeated every N points, okay? And minus N1 to N1, N1 represents essentially, it's gonna characterize the length of the on switch that we have in this signal. So what we wanna do is figure out how do I represent this signal here for generic N1 and N, because once I know how to represent the signal with any N1 and N, then I can think about constructing any length signal with whatever fundamental period that's on for a certain amount of time characterized by N1. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. So first, remember that this is the definition of the Fourier coefficients A of K. What it represents is a sum, one over N, from M equals zero to, ten, to N1, these are the only non-zero components that I'm going to add in here, right? So when I add up these signals, uh, I only have to look over this bin here, 
which basically goes from m equals zero to two n one. In other words, there's five points here. This is what I'm gonna add up here to represent this signal. And so this is gonna be using our, our formula where I just shifted it from negative n one to n one to zero to two n one. So it's the same sum shifted over. And I get this here representation of the Fourier series where all that happened during this shift is that I shift this over by n one. Okay, so I need to be able to evaluate this to compute coefficients a of k. So first of all, one of the things to notice, right, is this sum is for over m, and this term here, this e to the i uh, k 2 pi over n, n1 can come out of the integral. It has no m component, so I can just take it out, and what's left over is this sum right here, which is going to be a total, in the, at least in this picture, of five terms, but if n1 is you know, three, then they have seven terms total, okay? Okay, uh, so remember, because we, we're integrating against the signal x, and the signal, there's the signal right there. It's zero everywhere except for these five bins. That's why we're only adding up those five bins in here. Okay, so now, uh, I won't go through all that algebra steps here. I'll just highlight some of these because this is such an important signal, this on switch, uh, it's good to just see how this actually all works out. But when you actually use some of your, uh, this is actually a, a very special series that comes out and it actually collapses down into something that looks like this. So here is the term that was out in front. Here are the, this is what that sum is actually equivalent to. Uh, in fact, in the examples in the book, it shows you exactly how this relationship is is worked out, and then you can do some mani manipulation of this formula and bring it all the way down into this form here. So it collapses into a very nice form, uh, which is a sine, which has a certain frequency. You see the n1 plays a role here divided by n, and in the bottom you have the sine over pi k over n, which is again the total length of the period uh, of this discrete signal. Okay, so the n, which is the signal period shows up here and here and n1 which is the length that this uh, char the length that characterizes how long this um, on switch is on is n1 is right there okay so regardless of how i get this this is the formula for all the afk that are not for k equals 0 or plus or minus n in other words at the period points at the period points it becomes even simpler which is afk just turns out to be 2n1 plus 1 over n this is for k equals zero, plus or minus n, and so forth. So these are the expressions that you get from actually just computing out these terms here. And again, this is a very generic representation of this kind of on signal that would be um, a basic building block of signal processing. Oftentimes when we think about signals that are coming through a system, they're gonna be represented by something like this. I have an on switch, it comes off. So that's gonna be, the x of n, and I want a nice representation of that in terms of Fourier modes, and this is exactly the computation you have to do, and this is what it comes out to right here, okay? So we're gonna use this, and now notice this was generic for n1 and n, and now we can basically now use it for the specific example we were considering previously. But first, let's show some pictures of what this looks like. So first of all, if we take n1 equals two, so this, remember, the signal length was it goes from negative n1 to n1. This is when the signal is actually on. So this is on for over five, uh, for five little discrete units. We can also pick a fundamental period of 10 or 20 or 40. And this is what those A of K look like as you change the fundamental period. This is the fundamental period is 10. So it's short. You make it longer and even longer. And this is what you get. So this is this representation of these Fourier components that you have for a discrete signal. And remember, the Fourier components in the discrete case repeat themselves, right? So that's the one thing that you, you can just work with a, a domain. You don't have to plot it out over all this entire region. You can just plot it out over the fundamental period of 10. But it's still nice to look at these things and see what they look like here in terms of their representation in A, in a of K space. Okay. Once you have these coefficients, we actually want to do a reconstruction of the signal in these Fourier modes. Now remember that the Fourier mode representation, k goes from negative infinity 
to infinity. But of course, when we're actually doing computations, we're not going to go from negative infinity to infinity. We're going to actually limit this between some minus m and m. And so what we're going to do is a series of experiments here where we're going to do a reconstruction. We've already, re we've already computed all the day of k. And so now we're going to say, what happens when I try to reconstruct this signal with the a of k here? Uh, over some sum where I can play around with how many terms I use. So I can use uh, m equals 1, 2, 3. The more terms you would expect, I would get a better rec reconstruction of the signal itself, except now it's a discrete case. So all I need to do is if I have enough terms to represent the fundamental period, that's all I need. And I should get, in fact, a perfect reconstruction of the signal. So here you go. Let's look at this. This is my reconstruction of this here, where I'm using my coefficients that I computed here. So these are actually, these are the, the values of the coefficients inside of this reconstruction. And now I'm going to uh, make a better and better reconstruction by increasing m. So if you have m equals 1, here's what you get. So this is actually a very poor reconstruction of that on switch, right? It's, it's sort of I mean, it has some of the right structure, right? This thing turns on and then goes off, but it really never goes off and has a smoothed out version. If m equals two, you can see it's starting to flatten off the top here. m equals three, now you're starting to see the signal come out. And once you get to m equals four, now you see I've, you've done a really good job of doing a reconstruction of that step function, okay? So again, if you add enough terms, you can start, you know, use enough of these Fourier modes together, then you can start getting a very accurate reconstruction in this Fourier representation of the original signal. So what this shows you with even m equals four, I can get almost a perfect reconstruction of the signal that I'm actually trying to model. Okay. So we're going to use this now. That's one of the components for building up our overall signal. Now remember, we were using this example here. So this example was, it was one, two, one, two. So something was coming on and off. So this was a mix of the first signal, which was on, off, on, off, on, off. So this is the periodic signal that you can see repeating that has a total of n being five, right? That's the fundamental period of this thing, five points that keep repeating. Okay, and it's on for three of those points. And the second signal is just something that's on all the time, which is a DC component. Okay, so let's compute this. So the way to think about this is if I already know what the coefficients of x1 are and x2 are, all I have to do then is add them together and I get my full solution. So first let's look at this signal here. And if we go back to the calculation we just did, x1 is represented, let's say, by some Fourier modes, B of K, that's the first signal, and they are this. These are the following. You can actually put in uh, what we need here. So notice here, in this case, if I look at this signal, if we look at this, N1 is 1 and N here is 5. Those are the two values I put in to the calculation we just did for a generic on switch. And when you do that, this is what it comes out to. Your B of K are 1 fifth sine 3 pi K over 5, sine pi K over 5. These are the coefficients of the Fourier modes uh, for that signal uh, when K is not 0 or plus or minus 5, plus or minus 10, not at the period points. Uh, but B of K is 3 fifths. Okay, so in other words, just putting K equals 0. Uh, so actually, if when you go back to when you calculate this, you have to calculate the K equals 0 term separately. And it turns out, you get an e to the i zero, which is one. So it's a very simple calculation to get out three fifths. This is like the DC component that you'd be adding in to this here. Now for the second signal, x two, if you actually just do this sum, uh, you actually there's only a DC component because there are no oscillations here. Then the only thing that matters is the e to the i k zero, which is one, and you do the sum out and you find yourself uh, with a situation where the coefficient C0, that's going to be the expansion term, is going to be 1. Okay, So this is what we have here, is that we add together our signal, you project it onto the Fourier modes, and you can reconstruct back your original signal with this. Now remember, our overall signal is x1 
plus x2. So all that happens is this one that you have here, this DC component, gets added to this DC component, and that's what gives you here this 8 fifths that you see sitting here and a BFK of here. So what you have here is a complete representation of a signal made of two pieces, this one here, which is this on off switch, and this one here, which is a DC component. And this here gives you the overall picture, which is that signal, which is a combined uh, on off switch plus a DC component. So that's how you would do this. This is the full XN. And this gives you sort of an idea of how to, to think about these things because once you take this signal that you have and you represent it in Fourier modes, you're going to reconstruct that. You're going to use everything. You're going to work completely in the Fourier space because these are the eigenfunctions of the LTI system. And what you know, and we've already shown, is that if you take one of these Fourier modes and put it through the LTI system, what you get back is exactly that Fourier mode with a coefficient that just changes its its uh, size. It could be smaller or bigger. So just a coefficient in front of it. And so every signal you're going to use, you're going to have to first do a decomposition into its Fourier components, just like this in this example. And then once you've done that Fourier decomposition, that's the number one step, now you can start using those decompositions to model this in an LTI system. And that will come in the next lecture.